The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at this DAX weekly chart, but before we do that, we're going to answer a couple questions that were posed yesterday. One was uh, the difference between the Kansas City, Minneapolis, and Chicago wheat. I checked with uh, Cy Monley of Sylvius Financial and Farm Bureau, and he told me that it's mainly because of the different protein content in these things. Some are used for feed, and some is used for consumption, and that's basically uh, the reason and the size of the crop certainly certainly has something to do with it also. The second question is related to the farmers going bankrupt because of the low prices. Uh, that has very little to do with it for two reasons. One reason is the fact that most harm farmers operate like a business that's, you know, that Cy works on with them, of course, and that is that they hedge their crops to make their profit right away. They go to the bank, they get their money, it's all over. All they have to do is wait and see if the crop comes in. If it doesn't, it's insured. And so that's pretty much, uh, you know, how it works. They do a lot of speculation, of course, but they do get some income from these uh, tariffs that come in. So uh, there, every time somebody buys something, there's a tariff, that money goes uh, to the farmers, uh, as I said. So uh, that's uh, all I know, and that's about all I can tell you. So hope that helps. Uh, let's take a look at the next one that we want to look at, which is the DAX uh, four-hour chart. This is a little... Uh, this is better for traders, I think, than that daily chart. But if you'll take a look at this one here, you'll be able to see here that we've had this uh, really nice ABCD pattern that completed uh, uh, early uh, yesterday. And you can see it continued up. We almost made a 61% retracement today. We're very, very close to that. So it's still you know, moving in the right direction uh, if you're either long or short. It's giving you some nice patterns to look at for sure. Now, let's look at the next one, which will be the weekly on the FTSE. And you'll be able to see that this one here, of course, is a much bearish, much more bearish market. And you'll be able to see that, uh, you know, we're still heading down what we think is down to around 6,700. We just completed that ABCD last week, as you can see, exactly at the 61% retracement at 74.50 in the FTSE. And of course, all of this is dependent on the next tweet, as we all know. All right, let's take Take a look at the the FTSE on the four hour. By the way, we have a special guest today. Samuel Archibald Arrington Hicks Crawford of Crawford Perspectives will be our guest at 930 to talk to us about the markets and all things interesting. So that'll be fun. But here's the FTSE for the four hour chart. And you'll see the patterns here are the same as they are just about in everything else, because that's all you do is you see these patterns and all of these things. Anything that's liquid and viable and tradable will have these patterns in it, because it's the way that they measure emotion. And that's what uh, we really keep a uh, keep an eye on. So we'll see. All right. The, you know, the, the question that people are asking about this China thing, folks, is, you know, you can flip a coin whether any of this stuff means anything or not. I'm beginning to believe that it really doesn't. You know, we had a big break. Let's just show you what's happened here in the last, uh, oh, since Sunday night. Let's just get this up here, and you'll see that these things actually work pretty well technically. You'll see that we had, this is the NASDAQ. The S&P looks the same. The Dow looks the same. The difference is the S&P only made a 38% a retracement, whereas the NASDAQ made exactly a 50% retracement with an ABCD structure, and it hasn't backed off very much. So it's still got a chance here to maybe this thing will turn and go back and make new highs. We don't know. The first the first sign that it's really bullish is if we take out that 83.20 in the NASDAQ, and that would be 31.10 in the S&P. That would tell us that, yes, that's what we're looking at, and we'll be watching that uh, to see how it uh, 
to see how it works. So that's anyway. That's what I'm watching here uh, early this morning. Nothing. Nothing is really a whole lot different than uh, other things that we've seen, you know, in the past. So let's just uh, do one thing at a time as we go through here. I want to spend just a few seconds. Well, not a few seconds. I want to spend a little more time on that uh, with uh, the dollar index here because I think it's got a. Uh, we've got some real, uh, real possibilities here now for this dollar dollar index to start to backing off. Let's just get this pattern up here so you'll be able to see it on the daily chart and you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to see that we've stopped at that 61 percent retracement now we've not exceeded it folks that means the euro has held up relatively well at that 109 level we've gotten above that by about 80 pips which is a good sign that means that that dollar index is backing off saying that that 61 percent retracement has certainly stopped it so that's uh, what we're watching as we look at some of these things uh, one of the questions uh, that was posed this morning by email was uh, will there be any effect on what's happening with NATO? And, uh, folks, I have no idea. Uh, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, what, 29 countries and two of the bigger ones, Russia and uh, China, are not involved because they're not in the North. Well, Russia is, but uh, China isn't. So I don't know anything about those political things. And the less I hear about it and the more and the, the less I hear or read about it, I don't read any of that stuff because I don't get newspapers or magazines, but I try not to watch the news and stuff. I did see something interesting that. Uh, someone sent me today that happened in Los Angeles, and that was on Thanksgiving Day. The banker for Jeffrey Epstein, believe it or not, hung himself, and it was quickly re re, uh, uh, ruled a suicide. So he had been his banker for 20 years, and all of a sudden he shows up the same way pretty much that uh, Jeffrey did. Makes you wonder whether this stuff is really real that's going on or not. Uh, there'll probably be a movie made out of made uh, pretty good, but we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait for the sequel to I, I guess to see what's going on. Folks, if you have any questions, it's eight seven seven. 927-6648. That's what we want to look at. The first question that someone's asked me here uh, in the den is how important are these re re ratios that we're looking at in the S&P and the uh, the Nasdaq? And I personally, because I'm a uh, uh, I'm a uh, uh, technician, so all I do is I look at the retracement levels, and you know and that's what I was expecting is that we would get to that 3106 level, and uh, that level in the Nasdaq was a perfect A B C D. It was an A B C D in the uh, uh, prove it yourself in the 30 at the uh, 3106. We got as high as 3107 and a half. So I don't know where we're trading now, but that's uh, that's all I'm looking at because if it rolls over from here, folks, we had a big break. You know, this was a this was a huge break that we were looking at, and that means a lot. Uh, so that tells us um, it, uh, uh, the peak is asking: Is this the takeoff for gold and silver complex? I don't think so, and the reason for that is. Uh, peak is because uh, the rally that we had in the gold was only, uh, you know, we rallied, the, the bottom was at 56, 14.56. If you add, uh, you know, the $32 to that, that takes you to, well, it's 59, uh, to 89, and we only got to 89.90. If we get above 89.90, then I think uh, this, we've got game. So I'd be, you know, if it gets above 89.90, boy, there's not much above that. I mean, because uh, it, it clears 1,500, and boy, this is going to be a real bullish look chart as we pointed out uh yes as we pointed out sunday you know we uh, we we said gold did, did look bullish we'll be right back 877-927-6648 If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, uh, one of the questions that someone asked me over the weekend, uh, I think I've answered this several times before, but I'm going to do it again for a couple of reasons. One, I have a lot of uh, memories behind it, and at my age, memories is what you like to hang on to. Uh, the question was, how did I get started in astrology, you know, in the markets? Well, as I recall, the very first uh, part of this was, uh, of course, I've been a friend of Jim, Jim Twentyman since 1965, and Jim and I have studied cycles uh, uh, since that time. We were members of the Foundation for the Study of Cycles back when Edwin Dewey was still alive, and we used to chat with Gertrude Shirk, his assistant, uh, quite a bit, and they were doing work in astrology, and Jim did it because he had a really strong interest in it. I really didn't, but when I went to work at Drexel, uh, a lady came in, I believe it was 1978, when silver was moving from uh, you know, $4 all the way up to $54, and she said she could trade silver by using astrology, but she didn't have any money, and so I said, well, I'll, we'll open an account, and I said, you just tell me when to buy and sell, and uh, we'll see if we make some money, and we'll split it, and we did that, and she did pretty good. Uh, basically, what she was doing, as I recall, when Moon went into Scorpio, which was a two-and-a-half-day period, that it was a positive for silver. The problem was it was heavily biased because silver had bottomed in 72 and didn't top until January 8th of 1980, so it was heavily biased. She didn't have any losses, but she would have some drawdowns. I think the biggest drawdown was about $700, but by the time uh, the came time to sell it, it had reversed and, and made a profit. So she continued to do that. And... Um, 
We did we did quite successful, but the problem was that uh, it was heavily biased because it was only long silver and it was in a roaring bull market. But it worked, and I haven't checked it since that time. It worked for a while, and then I didn't. So that's pretty much it. But the real the real bit uh, the real important one was back in August of uh, 1986. Uh, I was uh, going through a divorce, and I was working as an expert witness for Eddie Horowitz, working with Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher, and Kiesel. Young and Logan out of Los Angeles, and it kept me pretty busy. I had usually uh, two cases a month, and um, that was very fun. And I got to travel and go to court, which was different. And I wasn't trading much. In fact, I wasn't even looking at prices. But uh, one day I got a, a card from my aunt, and she said, By the way, today is Larry Bird's birthday. And, you know, since we're going to be talking about that, I got a card from my aunt who owned the restaurant, Louise's, which was started. Louise was my, gra my grandmother's baby sister, and my grandmother started the restaurant in 1932, right in the midst of the Depression, and it fed the family for 70 years. Uh, my cousin still owned it till about five, oh, seven, eight years ago when they uh, sold it, and then a few years later, uh, the quality went down, and it mysteriously burned down. But uh, I used to go there, uh, you know, whenever I went in town to see my cousins and have some great food. And one day I was in there, and um, there was uh, one of my very, very very dear friends, Lou Meese, who owned the big department store there in Terre Haute and was a big help to me in my career of, you know, learning to be a, an adult. And he was sitting there with this tall, gangly looking guy with his girlfriend, and it was Larry Bird. And he, this was uh, when Larry was a junior. I had no idea who Larry Bird was or anything, but I was a big big, big fan of Lou Meese. And I uh, walked up and he, he knew the family and everybody. And so I walked up to my cousin and I said, you know, give me the check because I don't, I don't want him to pay for the dinner. So I bought the dinner for the four people. Little did I know I was buying uh, birthday, uh, a dinner for uh, Larry Bird. And, and later I got to meet him, of course, several times and go to his birthday parties, which were held in July because he's playing basketball in December. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, I guess I'm I guess I'm rambling on here. They're going to shut me off. I guess. Hold on, just a second. Uh, okay, we got a call on from uh, Jupiter, Florida, from Bill. What can I help you with, Bill? Are you falling asleep? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. It's very interesting, Larry. And since you're giving us a little bit of history, I wanted to ask you, and maybe you can share with us from a technical perspective and where technical analysis is today versus when you began in the business. And would you say it's better or it's different? How would you describe it? Trading is not easy. It, it takes a lot of work and a lot of focus and concentration. Mm -hmm. But would you say that we have more advantages in technical tools today, or they work better, or they don't, or the markets are more volatile? How would oh, you give that, us some that's, perspective on that's a, technical that's a great... analysis today and trading today using technical okay. analysis? Well, we have information overload now, Bill. In my opinion, we got too much. You know, back when we started, we didn't yeah. even, I, I was yeah. using a ticker tape. So now we have all these, you see people with 20 and 30 monitors, which I think is a little overdone. I, I have two big monitors that I don't even use anymore. But uh, it's basically, uh, you know, you just got an overload. The, the difference is, and this is a really big difference, this is the difference is the spread between the bids and offers are now pennies. It used to be quarter half when you bought a stock. You know, you bought right. it for a quarter. Order, he yeah. sold it for half. Now we're trading in pennies. Right. This was due to the SOS bandits and Harvey, whatever his name was, Harvey Houtkin, uh, you know, back in the late 90s. And so that changed. But the, you have instant access, and you're you're basically you're trading like a floor trader. You're paying, what, 4 or $5 for a futures contract and, you know, even less for right. a, free for some some places. So you, you have all the things necessary. The, the technical pictures of the market, in other words, the bar charts themselves, they have not changed, and they will never change. And the reason for that is it's just a way of looking at the psychology of the market. I don't care who is looking at the charts. If you took off the date and if you took off the value of it so you couldn't see what it was, no one could tell you what that chart, uh, that chart would be. Now, some of them, like Tesla and Apple, would be predictable. But most of the charts, you would not be able to tell what they were or how they are. So you really don't uh, – you know, you're, you're trading equal with everything. Everybody else. The thing is, we got so much stuff coming in that it's uh, you know it's just really uh, pretty much of a 
uh, a crapshoot, you know, because you, you just have to, you know, to pick the chart that you want to do and then just I'm, I'm a technician though bill see i don't look at any fundamentals i'm just looking at up and down charts and, and, and about bars and that's what i'm trying to do is to find little patterns that uh that are easy to use so that's the big difference is the the flow of information tremendous but it's an overload most of the time you, you, you see some charts that are so busy that you can't even make out heads or tails what the thing is doing so that's what i think no, and I would I hope, agree with you, I hope Larry. That helps. There's just yeah. too much information. So how do you filter it down so that you can get to where you can make a decision? It's almost like, you know, there are so many, there's so much information and so many contradictory uh, aspects yes. to everything. You have to narrow it down to a certain scope. But I do agree with yeah. you, by the way, charts, and I have learned this through the years, a chart from the 1800s and a chart from today are no different. You're, I, I totally That's agree right. with you. But how do you filter? Yeah. What are you using oh, to I use it to filter that you actually enter a trade with? I start with the pattern, A, B, C, D, Gartley's, Butterflies, uh, 1, 3, 5 patterns, and I add the ratios to that. That gives me two factors to work with as far as risk control. So whenever I enter the trade, I know, much I ha how, I know how much I have to risk. And from there, I just go ahead and put the trade on and see what happens. I follow 12 things pretty closely. Of those 12, I'll probably get three good signals a day, and that's what I'm looking for. Wow, terrific, Larry. Thank you very th much. Th thanks for calling in, Bill. We'll have Arch Crawford here in just a few minutes, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Arch Crawford from Tucson, Arizona, as our guest today. Sam, are you there? I am here. Good. Sam, we've got the chart of gold, but before we start, uh, folks were asking me how I got started in the astrology, and I got some of it, Then I'll finish the rest of it later. But how did you get started? Uh, you, were worked, uh, you were working for Bob Farrell when you got to uh, New York, didn't you? T tell the story. It's, it's yeah. very interesting. So go ahead. Uh, starting where? Uh, well, start how you got started in the whole business of the commodities, because you're from uh, South Carolina. So how did a boy from South Carolina get to the Big Apple? North Carolina. North Carolina. That was close. Yeah. I, was just, I started you know, watching. Well, I was um, – my father was not interested in the stock market, but he worked for Reynolds Tobacco, and he would check the uh, stock page for the price of Reynolds. And I said, oh, I, I love numbers. What are all those numbers? And he said, they're stocks, and they go up and down. And I said, you mean you can make money without working? <laughs> uh, so that's how I got started. And I okay. found out that was not quite the case. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I started watching when I was 13, and then I did my first trade when I was 14. And um, uh, I was going to the University of North Carolina studying physics and math, and I was spending too much time over at the library looking up stock market stuff. And my point, grade point average was beginning to slip, and it was getting down to a major support level. And I figured before it broke that, I would uh, – go do what I wanted to do. So I, I left, and I went to work for Merrill Lynch in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, marking a chalkboard. And they got an electronic board about a month after that. We're talking 1961. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, this is great. This is what I want to do with my life. Send me to New York. And they said, don't be silly. Don't be ridiculous. And then so six months later, I said, I quit. I'm going to go to New York and look for a job. They said, don't do that. We'll transfer you. But of course, the, the volume had been picking up greatly in 1961, and they needed people. So mm -hmm. I was lucky to be in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went right up, and I, I had studied. One, one of the guys in Raleigh had gotten me the book uh, on technical analysis of stock trends by McGee and Edwards. And I had self-taught my uh, studying charts every week. And uh, so I was already a, a technician when I got there. And uh, Bob Farrell wanted me, and it took, took him a little bit of a while to talk him into having an assistant because he was there by himself. <laughs> I was his first <laughs> assistant ever. Then in 19... Uh, 63, uh, the day before my birthday, an article came out in the Wall Street Journal about people using astrology in the various markets. And I went and met all of them. One was uh, the head of the floor gold trading for COMEX, and he said he almost lost his job over that article on the front page. Wow. But he actually... Uh, traded three contracts for me for three years in the mid-70s, which you're not supposed to do, but we had an arrangement, and he wanted to try it too. And uh, I made 250% a year trading every uh, three or four days on the goal. Then they started upping the margin. Uh, he, he wanted to quit because I was making the money holding overnight, and he never hold, held anything overnight. He didn't want that risk, but he risked oh. it for three contracts for me. Mm -hmm. well, so, that's pretty good. So I was making a living at it, uh, and uh, he was not that excited about it, so he wanted to stop doing it. And then mm -hmm. I was trading on my own just a couple of contracts, and – and the price started running up, and the margins started running up, and they ran <laughs> way ahead of my uh, ability to buy a contract. Mm -hmm. So I did other. I started the newsletter in '77. So you've been doing the newsletter forty years, huh? Forty-three. 
Wow, that's amazing. For you folks who might want to know, Sam and I are almost exactly the same age. He's three months older than me, but uh, we've uh, he's very— But in, I don't in, hold in, it over. <laughs> yes, I know that. I know that. He was his birthday—it's really funny, folks. His birthday was the same birthday as J.P. Morgan, and mine's the same birthday as Ralph Elliott. So <laughs> whether that means anything, I, I don't know. Sam, let's uh, let's take a quick look here at this gold chart. Uh, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Call the while we're on the air. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Tell, tell them why I call you Sam, because you got nine, you got about nine different names. You're almost like uh, Kiefer Sutherland. He's got like 24 first names. You've got, what, nine or something? <laughs> no. I, my name is Archibald <laughs> Arrington I... Hicks Crawford, and I was named for my grandfather, Archibald Arrington Hicks, so I'm not the second or the third or the fourth. Mm-hmm. My next-door neighbor, by the way, was Archibald Hunter Arrington Williams the fourth. Oh, boy. And he's still oh. kicking around. Yeah. How'd you get the name Sam? Sam, they just nicknamed you that? No, I was uh, living with my cousin, Ar- Archibald Arrington Hicks, <laughs> in oh, okay. Chicago, and working for the Harris Trust in uh, Monroe Street. Okay. And so every time anybody said Arch, we both answered. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, call me Charlie, which is... Uh, RT with uh, an L and a different letter arrangement. And uh, this friend of my cousin said, well, could I call you Sam? I've always wanted to know a Sam. And I said, sure. <laughs> and I, I used it while I was there in Chicago. And I liked it. I, I found myself more relaxed mm-hmm. and more okay. at ease with people under the name Sam than a Bar- Archibald, of course. Well, I've been calling you that for 30 years, Sam. What are you seeing in the gold market here? What, uh, what, what are you, what you're feeling here? Looks like you're pretty bullish to me. Uh, it looks pretty bullish to me. Oh, by the way, I'm I'm number two in the country for calling the the gold the last six months, 12 months. Oh, well, timer digest, great. That's that's fabulous. Glad to hear yeah. that. And uh, I gave the buy signal on a powerful buy signal on June the third before it broke out. I said, it looks like this could be the big one. Buy more gold now in the letter of June the 3rd. Well, that was spot on. That was a great one. Uh, what do you think the next breakout level is, to Sam? Do you feel uh, 1,500, or what are you looking at? Um, let's see. Where is that chart? Uh, here. Okay. Um, the next breakout, it's making a flag. Mm-hmm. Uh, pattern that's now like three months old. Um, day before yesterday, it came up to a declining 50-day moving average, but it's still in the flag. It did not break out yet. And then um, yesterday or today, it hit a higher high and is dropping down below. It's it's down five bucks now. So mm-hmm. it may retest the 1450 level, uh, which they had a double bottom in November, early and late November. Mm-hmm. And uh, it has to go above uh, 1495 to break um, out I, of the flag pattern on the upside. Yeah, I see that. Hey, stay with us, Sam. We want to ask you about the stock market, bond market, okay? Okay, dope. Yeah, Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspectives. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average Average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspectives, ranked number two for gold timing for the last six months at Timer Digest. Arch, uh, someone's asking a question. Uh, do you see anything uh, really ominous over the next decade? Because, you know, we've been up for a decade. Very, very unusual. We've, we've quadrupled since 2009, much like we did uh, the four years before, or the nine years before uh, 1929. Do you see anything astrological that is uh, a little scary out there? Not, well, not that it means I, I anything. <laughs> Every, every crash that has occurred in the last hundred and so many years all took place in the same 40% of the Mars-Uranus cycle. Mm -hmm. And we just entered that period um, November 24th. Okay. So, we, wow. so we are now in the 40% where a crash could possibly happen. Mm -hmm. Now you have to have other things uh, confirmed. And of course... We are way overbought on any kind of uh, long-term, intermediate-term mm -hmm. patterns. Mm -hmm. um, and I predict that we will have a crash this coming year because everything is so out of alignment. And there may even be an attempt to crash the market on purpose to make uh, Trump lose the presidency. Mm -hmm. Well, there's certain it's all related to money, I guess. So who knows? That's for sure. What's well, your feeling about President Trump's a, a, chance a of being elected? And of course, people who have had a good economy um, have always won the presidency. Mm -hmm. um, that's been a, a the most secure uh, position for somebody running for president if they've mm -hmm. been. You know, a renewal, and the people who have lost the second term, um, it's uniformly been bad business news. Do you see anything in Trump's chart, or do you look at his birth chart at all to see if there's anything really negative? Actually, I sent him, 
you know, I do a booklet that's uh, made up on by your own chart that's a, for a calendar year and mm-hmm. all the aspects to your own chart and some of what they mean and particularly mm-hmm. the main ones. Uh, and I sent one to the president mm-hmm. last year, and I'm going to send him another one before does it the look, new year. Does it, look, does it look good or bad? I don't know. I didn't oh, read okay. it yet. I hadn't okay, gotten so. it yet, but the... Uh, okay. Well, Sam, we're going to hold you to that. So you say there's going to be a crash coming someday. So if it doesn't happen, we're going to have to have you back on the air and say what happened. So we've got well, a 10-year period to see a crash. There's no certainty <laughs> in calling something like that until um, when the market has turned down and is accelerating to the downside, I can pick the day of a crash a, a week in advance. Well, that's pretty good. I noticed that your charts that you're showing here, you're showing these gaps that we've had this week uh, in the uh, SPX and the Dow Jones Industrial Lab. That in itself is a very unusual event. And uh, do, do you think that means anything? Could be the start of something? or uh, well, if these... you, uh, look, well, the SPX in particular have the uh, on the chart the uh, rising wedge pattern that's within a, in a larger pattern of, of – uh, broadening uh-huh. and the the wedge pattern <clears throat> broke down slightly and then went up and touched the bottom of the wedge um, at the top Wednesday <laughs> and, and then we came down um, what is it Friday we broke down out of sharply out of about mm-hmm. any pattern you could look at and uh, and then Monday we uh, kind of tanked early in the day and came back quite a lot. But they all came down to supports, uh, trend lines on the NDX and on the SPX, and the 50-day moving average on the uh, Dow Jones. Uh, And that's what they're bouncing off of now. The thing is, once we uh, are close to uh, breaking to, to covering the gap, which we are on the SPX, but not on the Dow. Well, the Dow almost did it. <clears throat> so they're pro- close to fill, filling the gap. Now, is it going to turn back down and go down harder, or is it going to form a pattern and, and go back up? Now, mm-hmm. I'm very bullish about the last half of the month. Uh, there's this solar eclipse on the 25th, 26th, depending on where you live in the U.S., Mm-hmm. And uh, that's conjunct Jupiter within, like, with a little more than one degree. There's Jupiter all over this sky, uh, <laughs> the 26th, the 30th, the 2nd of January. Mm-hmm. All Jupiter, 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 which means usually it's the planet of expansion. So uh, I'm very bullish on the last half of the month. Whatever it does in the next week and a half, two two weeks. And we'll be able to see Jupiter in uh, in here in Tucson in the sky. Oh yeah, uh, it's you can see uh, Jupiter and Saturn are fairly close together, and they are growing closer. I think Saturn is about uh, 20 Capricorn, and and Jupiter just entered Capricorn. Wow. So you can see them in the sky and. Jupiter is the brightest thing, uh, mm-hmm. Jupiter and Venus, and then I think Venus is coming around there, so the, all the bright ones will be in Capricorn. <laughs> well, yeah, that's where we were in tw- uh, that's where we were in uh, August of. Uh, oh no, Capricorn is January, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking of August uh, twenty, the fifth uh, harmonic convergence back when the market topped back in eighty seven. That was a, a big time. You and I were on TV together. You remember that with Bill uh, Bill Griffith at, in uh, California? Do you remember that? What year? Yeah, that was uh, I think it was eighty seven. Remember we? Um, uh, there was ninety, I think. Uh, no, it was the the top was uh, August the twenty fifth, nineteen eighty seven. Oh. 
Oh, yeah, the 24th was the high close, the 25th yeah. was the high hour. Yeah, cause, yeah I remember, because you had been talking about that for a long time, and that turned out to be a really good one. Sam, well, how was, are the folks— That was an important date, one of the most important dates in all of history. Um, well, and, that was supposed—that was harmonic convergence, supposed to be the end of the Mayan calendar or something? Right. Yeah. Oh, and wow. uh, the thing is, the book uh, Arguez wrote was on the— mentioned on the front page of the journal, and I went and bought it, and he had the wrong date. I looked at that date, and with the astrology, he had the 17th, and mm -hmm. uh, I was moving my uh, computer ahead one day at a time, and seven days later, here's the tightest five-body conjunction in all of known history, <laughs> and I said that, and it's a, it was all trying to Jupiter, the best possible aspect to Jupiter, and I said, mm -hmm. It doesn't get any better than this. It's got to be a top. And after this <laughs> top, it's yeah. going to crash. Well, it did. Hey, Sam, and thanks I for joining it us. The day. It was on that day was yeah. the high close. Okay, we'll post in the, the den here how the folks can uh, reach you. But thanks again, my friend. I hope to see you over the holidays. In fact, I'll probably see you tomorrow. I think Byron's coming down to visit, and he plans on seeing you. So hopefully we can get together. Terrific. Thank you. Okay, you bet. Sam Crawford, folks. Archibald Arrington Hicks Crawford. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as a number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, uh, tomorrow I'll finish up the story of the astrology stuff with Dr. Ruth Miller, because that was truly a life-changing uh, experience for me, that uh, years of 86, 87, 88. But we'll cover that tomorrow. Uh, remember, folks, that we're having a nice, strong rally off the bottom. We're now 40 handles higher. Don't forget, we went from 55, 3155, all the way down to 3070. So we're back up to that 50% retracement now uh, in the S. S&P, and we'll see how much more. We're, in the, we're still in the, uh, amateur hour. It's 10 o'clock now, so about another 20, 30 minutes. If we're still going up, it'll probably go up the rest of the day. Otherwise, it'll probably reach a top somewhere up in here around the 13, 14, 13, 15 area is what I would be guessing if I were guessing man, and I try not to guess uh, too much. Uh, one other comment that I'd like to make, and that is um, – my good friend Tom Hugard will hopefully we will be on the show here uh, Friday, and he'll spend a little extra time with us this week because he's done for the year, and uh, he'll give us some talk uh, about some of the things that uh, that he's seeing in the markets and also some of the psychology that's involved that made a transition for him. And then next week, uh, we're going to have David Paul. He is one of Tom's mentors and that we've had on the show before, so they'll be on. And then hopefully, uh, we'll also have Bill Meridian from Cycles research when he gets back into Vienna we'll be able to uh, visit with him so those are just a few of the things uh, that we're watching uh, today uh, I did want to mention folks that uh, the Treasury bond market is in a position where it could really do a lot of damage to the downside here folks if we don't get above the 161 level here in the uh, bonds here the March bonds very shortly uh, this is going to be a really really low 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 value uh, rally not even making a 382 retracement and that is extremely bearish and we know that this debt situation that we have out there is uh, overwhelming whether it'll happen in our lifetime or not I don't know but remember what arch said that we will have a crash sometime in the next 10 years. So the day after that crash, we're going to have him on. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.